Welcome to First Chapter Fridays. For this week's edition, we are going to listen to the first chapter of Weird Kid by Greg Van Eekhout. So sit back, relax, and use your imagination as we read the first chapter of this book. Chapter 1. Tomorrow I'll be among people, so tonight I practice my smile. Smiling should be easy. You pull up the corners of your mouth, maybe show some teeth, maybe don't, and that's it. You're smiling. Or if you're me, you grow a forked snake tongue just for fun. But only when nobody's looking. Only when you want to. At least, that's how it used to to be. Tomorrow's the first day of middle school, and I have to keep my mouth and body under control or else. I face the bathroom mirror and try a smile, bright and friendly. My teeth are all wrong, too small, too many, shaped like tiny, sharp arrowheads. Piranha teeth, great, I mutter, being careful not to cut my tongue. Things started going haywire in June. That's when I started going haywire. I was at the grocery store with mom, helping her pick out avocados for Tuesday taco night. And I had to get around an old man blocking the aisle. Excuse me, sir, I said. And he gave me a huge smile and told me I was very polite. For some reason, the phrase, ear to ear grin popped into my brain and before I knew it my mouth stretched so wide it curved around my face in an actual ear to ear grin. The top of my head might have toppled off if I'd smiled any bigger. The old man screamed and ended up needing EMTs and oxygen and mom rushed out of the store, and we didn't have any guacamole with our tacos that night. That wasn't my only accidental shape shifting this summer. A week after the grocery store, I was bouncing on the trampoline in the backyard. On my last landing, my body flattened into a big tortilla. I managed to reform my human shape after a few seconds. But if the neighbors had seen, shifting in public is very dangerous. They could find out about me. They is the police. They is government agents. They is my teachers and classmates. They is my friends. They could be anyone. That's what mom and dad tell me all the time. I try another smile in the mirror, just a tiny one. I can do this. I've smiled before, hundreds of times. I'm just having some new school nerves. I'm just freaking myself out. Close my eyes. Take a breath. Think normal thoughts. I open my eyes. Staring back at me is a Venus flytrap. I am doomed. The drop-off curb in front of Cedar Creek View Middle School is a chaos of cars and slamming doors and screaming kids. Mom and Dad insisted on driving me, even though I could have walked or ridden my bike. They say delivering me to school makes things easier, but I know this is a test. Mom turns to look back at me, feeling good about today. What she means is, have you accidentally grown eye stalks? Have you reverted to pure goo form? Do you need a bucket? Mom and Dad wanted to start homeschooling me to prevent anyone from discovering my secret, but I refused. I want to do normal things. I want to eat stale chicken nuggets in the cafeteria. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to sketch guitars on my math worksheets instead of doing actual math. I won the fight, 
so I get to go to regular school. But if I have a shifting episode, they'll pull me right out. Any cramps, Dad asks? No. Burning sensations? No. Excessive itching? Strange wiggling? No, Dad, no. Dad's a proctologist. That means he's a medical doctor who specializes in butts. Asking about symptoms is how he shows he cares. As soon as the car stops, I leap out. I'm 10 steps away before they stop me. Jake! With a groan, I turn around. Dad's holding out my lunch card. I tromp back and pluck it from his outstretched hand. I love you, kid, he says. Mom smiles. Have a wonderful first day, Jake O'Lantern. I wave, but don't smile back because I don't want to risk my mouth doing something weird. A few minutes of shuffling and dodging through the clogged halls gets me to my first class, advisory. Sit anywhere, the teacher says, not looking up from the stack of papers on his desk. Class doesn't even start for another five minutes and he already seems stressed. I get it. I gaze out into a sea of faces and instantly regret it because now a sea of faces is looking back at me. What's my mouth doing? Is it normal sized? Do I have an extra row of teeth? Do I have tusks? Nobody's screaming, so it's probably good. Cedar Creek View Middle School takes students from all seven elementary schools in our district. So instead of a few hundred kids, now I'm going to school with almost a thousand. Only a few of the faces are familiar. I catch sight of Eric near the window and give him a nod. Our eyes lock for a second before he looks away, pretending he didn't see me. We are, we are best friends, or we used to be. Things changed over the summer. He just wanted to hang out the way we normally did. Jumping our bikes off of a plywood ramp in front of his house, shooting hoops, playing putt-putt golf. But I couldn't risk shifting into jelly at the water park. So I kept putting him off, making excuses. One day, it'd be a dentist appointment. Then I'd tell him I had a stomach ache, then chicken pox. After a month of that, he gave up on me, and I can't blame him. I duck my head and aim for a seat in the back row. A few more kids straggle in. The final one, a tall white girl, takes the empty seat next to me. I notice her backpack stuffed so full that the zipper doesn't shut. I also notice a purple and green snake poking out of it. After another second or two of looking at it, I realize it's not a snake, but a coil of climbing rope, which is maybe not as weird, a thing to bring to school as a snake, but it's unusual. And the third thing I notice is the patch sewn on the shoulder of her denim jacket. It's the wing logo of Night Kite, my second favorite comic book character. Night Kite doesn't have any superpowers, but by training her mind and body, she turned herself into a living weapon against evil. My first favorite character is Star Hammer, an alien who secretly lives among humans on Earth. I look up from the girl's patch to find her frowning at me. What's wrong? I ask, dreading the answer. Without breaking eye contact, she jots something down in a little black notebook. You're Jake Wind. How do you know? The school bell's bell chimes and Mr. Brown tells us to be quiet. He goes over some announcements and rules and the student conduct code. A lot of time is spent on the subject of chewing gum. 
Gum is disgusting, he rants. I don't want to see gum stuck under your seats. I don't want to see it between your teeth. I don't want to hear it smacking in your mouth. I don't even want to see it in its wrapper. I find gum relatable since it can be transformed from a rigid rectangle into a shapeless wad. But Mr. Brown has a zero tolerance gum policy. Now that Mr. Brown has expressed his feelings, he finally gets around to taking roll. I learn that the girl with night kite patch is named Agnes Oates. My nerves get jangly when Mr. Brown gets to the S names because it means he's getting to the end of the alphabet, which means he's going to call on me soon, which means at least five kids are going to turn around to look at me when I raise my hand. My heart pounds and my fingers twitch and my face tingles and there's a big resounding hum between my ears and I wish I could just fly away like a bird. Jake Wind, Mr. Brown calls. Wishing bird-related thoughts turns out to be a mistake. I've sprouted feathers on my right hand. Actual bird feathers, speckled brown and gold. This is a first. Jake Wind? I tuck my right hand under my desk between my knees. Jake went, going once, going twice. Here, I squeak, putting my left hand up. Mr. Brown looks at me. Kids look at me. All of them looking at me. Please, oh please don't let my mouth have turned into a bird beak. Parker Zabalos calls Mr. Brown moving on. I guess my mouth did not transform into a bird beak. The humming in my head softens and my hand reverts to normal. And I let myself breathe now that everyone's looking at Parker, a girl in the third row. Everyone but Agnes Oates. She stares into my face and scribbles furiously in her notebook. That completes the first chapter in Weird Kid. Stop into the library to pick up the book to find out how this story ends. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of First Chapter Fridays.